Over the next few months, we're, we're stepping into October, then we have November and December. And for me, the last three, four months of the year are, are pivotal because we ought to start assessing how the year has gone, but we ought to start preparing for the next year ahead. October, look, I, I walked into Sainsbury's last week, the, the, the banner and the poster of um, get your Christmas orders in soon has already come up. They've already been selling meat pie, uh, mince pies as well. So it's about that time. People this week have already been talking about putting up their Christmas decorations. So the year is almost upon us. So we're going to do the work. And so based on Friday, um, Minister Adana was talking about how some people have been, uh, been pressured, pressured into a space of immobility in God not being able to move, not being able to progress, that some form of stifling in your, or stagnancy in your spiritual walk. And yeah, we're going to put disciplines in place. Amen? We're going to put some disciplines in place because it is important that we thrive in the will of God. There's, we're not leaving anyone behind. The only people that will be behind is if you forcefully choose to stay behind. Amen? But if, that, if you don't want that to be you, then you must make a choice today. There must be a choice that you're making today. And so that's why I'm saying we're doing this collectively. And so the, 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 the first challenge that I want to set to everyone today, um, you don't have to do it in the service or during the service, but I want you to take an assessment of your life and I want you to look at it, things that are distracting you, things that are distracting you, practical things that are distracting you from spending time with God in prayer, in studying the word, and in doing what God asks you to do. So there's three, there's three areas. The first one was... Identifying distraction, yeah? Identifying what's distracting you from... Yeah? Spending time with God and... Doing what He asks you to do. First one is... Prayer. Next one is... Wow. I've said it before. I, yeah. this, is, this is Comprehension 101. First one is... No, that, that's not, no, that's not the full point. What's the, what is distracting you from prayer? Hello? Yeah? I need you guys to follow me. What is distracting you from prayer? Don't just say prayer because this is how we get into Christian needs. That's not exactly what I said. What is distracting you in the place of prayer? The next one is, what's distracting you from spending time with God? Maybe we can be a bit more specific and maybe, let's say, studying the word of God. Then the next one is, what is distracting you from doing the will of God? Those are the three areas that I want you to take an honest assessment of things that are distracting you. And I want them to be very practical things. First things first is that I'm not talking... If, if, in fact, let me make it very clear. If it is, if it's a particular sin issue, that doesn't even fall into what I'm saying, because that shouldn't, that shouldn't even be considered for practical things that are distracting us. That shouldn't even be things that we're entertaining. Hello. So if it's sin, better assess your life and put at the top. That one is separate. <laughs> because we have to deal with that with a vengeance. What I'm talking about primarily is things that distract us. If it's your phone, how much time you spend on your phone, that's a distraction. Put that down. Then with that, don't just say, oh, it's my phone. What about it? I spend too much time on it. I spend too much time on these apps. Then what are you going to do to solve it? What I'm going to do to solve it is I'm going to put a timer on my phone that I'm, I'm only allowed to use my phone X amount of time a day. And I want you to be brutally honest and committed. Don't say I'm going to spend one and a half hours on this app for the whole day and then start changing it because it's possible that you can do so. Say, oh, one and a half hours, it's not that bad. Let me just make it two. Or two is not too bad. Let me make it two and a half. This, this as we're entering October, we, what we're doing is we're building discipline through commitment. Somebody say commitment. What you put down, you will commit to it. And how are we going to do that? We're going to be accountable to one another. Ah, we're going to be accountable to one another. 
So this one is not, oh, I'm, this is just me and the Lord. No, we're not playing that game. Maybe last year. Maybe, maybe last year you could have gotten away with it. But this year, we're not getting away with it. If it's not your phone, maybe it's TV. Maybe it's Netflix. So what does that mean? There's a restriction on the time that, you need to, to, that you're going to be watching. Or if it's TV, there's a restriction on the amount of time per day that you will spend on watching TV. This is not the time of year where I'm trying to hear people are saying, oh, I was able to watch a whole season of something in two days. If I should hear somebody say that, best not me, myself, me and you will have a conversation. This is not a time for anyone binging on any TV programs. The will of God is at hand and you're telling me that you have enough time to be sitting down watching hours of TV or you have hours to be sitting on your phone scrolling on, on apps. No way. Let me hear that and it's me and you. I'm, and, and I'm being recorded as well. So it's personal. It's me and you. Some of you, it might be going out. Because the reality is going out can be a distraction. We say read the word, you don't read the word. We say pray, you don't pray. But you find enough time to be going out. We have a problem. It's just that we're not honest with ourselves. Yeah, but God doesn't mind me. I'm just going out with friends. How many times will you go out with friends and starve your prayer altar? How many times will you go out with friends and go here and go there and starve your word life? Then when it's time to pray, you can't pray. When it's time to worship, you can't worship. When it's time to, to quote memory verses, you're, you can't remember. You have to be rushing to... Um, I'm not sure what that Bible verse... Let me go to Google. Let me go to chat GBT at least. Or they say you should pray they should, you, that you will be the one leading prayer on Tuesday. It's 11 o'clock on Monday night. That's when you're preparing for prayer. Some of you are laughing. Don't think that I don't know how... <laughs> I know this game very well. Those of you that lead prayer on Tuesday morning... Don't think that you can get away with just scrounging for verses the night before. And can I be honest? Some of you, I can tell when you haven't prepared. I can tell when you haven't prepared for prayer. I can tell when you haven't prepared in terms of your homework. This, you should thank God for people that know, for leaders that know the voice of God, child. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm telling you something. Because if you want to, if you think that just scrounging for Bible verses and doing a quick five-minute study before the next day is going to sustain your spiritual walk. You're not only deceiving yourself, but you're deceiving the people that you're meant to be leading. We can't say, let's go deeper, and you, in shallow waters. You can't be treading in shallow waters and saying, well, I'm leading people into, into the deeper things of God. It doesn't work like that. So once again, and this is, this is so that the fear of the Lord can come upon his people. If you, if you think you can cheat the system by not preparing for prayer, we have already sussed you. Turn to your neighbor and say, we've sussed you. We've sussed you. I'm happy that Prof and PT are watching as well. Because maybe they may have never said that, but you will know that AP will say that. Don't, don't play the game. Don't cheat yourself. Don't cheat. Because you're not just, you're not robbing just God's people, you're cheating yourself. So if it's a thing of, there's the busyness of life has got you distracted, assess yourself. Some of you is your time management skills. Some of you are nodding instead of you writing down. <laughs> this isn't a fashion, be writing down. I'm helping you because I don't want you to go home and go, what did AP say again? I'm giving you ideas. I'm, I'm, I'm helping you suss things out. Some of you is your time management skills. It is poor. And because you can't manage your time skill, your, your time effectively, you're what, you're, you come to a point in the day when you're like, oh, I should read the word of God, but I'm tired. I should read the word of God, but I need to cook. I should be praying or I should be doing what God asked me to do, but I'm, I'm so busy or I'm so worn out because of X, Y, and Z. Time management. So if time management is an issue, then we're going to need to work on that. Amen. Some of you... It might be a health thing. I spoke about some of us who have allowed the ministry of um, 
eating a pack of biscuit to destroy our, our physical destinies. But the Lord is reclaiming our destiny. Amen. Amen. This month, maybe it might be a thing about your diet. Watching what you eat. And maybe it's not a diet thing. Maybe your diet is okay, but you don't look after your body. Oh, AP, I don't have money to go to the gym. Walk. There's, um, there's, there's no excuse. Nobody can tell me that there's an... If you don't have money to go to the gym, get up and walk. And you know the beauty of that is that if you wake up on time, the prayer that you're skipping, the prayer, the time that you used to walk is the time that you can use to pray. I'm giving you guys the minerals. I'm giving you guys the tools that will help save your soul. Because some of you are like, how will I do it? Go for a walk in the morning. Do 10,000 steps, 5,000 steps. You know, as you're doing it, you're praying. You're interceding. So you're using time to build up your physical body, but you're also using time to build up your spiritual man as well. This is how we're effective with our time. Some of us, it's because we, we, we're just, we've prioritized the wrong things. It's a priority issue. What are the things that are important to God right now for you? That's what you have to prioritize. Some of you, it's wisdom. It's a wisdom thing. You need to know how to applicate, uh, learn to, to apply, sorry, the information that you have been given, whether in work, whether in church, Bible study. You need to learn how to apply it to your daily life. It's a wisdom thing. If we say, how much of the word do you read and listen to? You might not say much. But if we say, how many podcasts, how many YouTube videos of, of self-help and motivational X, Y, and Z did you listen to this week? If we, what, if we look at your watch list, what will we see? Because you can spend minimum 30 minutes, 40 minutes. It's a, if it's a good episode, you can spend an hour to watch stuff that entertains your soul but doesn't edify your soul. Hello. Your soul is not there to be entertained. Your soul is in need of edifying. This is why people can go to places craving something and leave empty. Because your soul doesn't need entertainment. Your flesh likes entertainment. But your soul needs edifying. That's the spiritual truth. And for those that, and for those that actually want to walk with God, if you write that down, I promise you it will bless your soul. Your soul needs edifying, not entertainment. Psalmist says, as the deer pants for the water, using a physical analogy to explain a spiritual truth, so my soul longs after you. Not after what you can give me, not after blessing, so my soul longs after you. God satisfies the needs of your soul. That's why people can give you gifts. People can give you money and you can still not be satisfied. Because it might be pleasing to the flesh and you might have new stuff to add to the wardrobe, but your soul is craving something deeper. Somebody say deeper. So for, for, for many of us, it's wisdom, it's God's truth that we ought to apply Maybe this month of October, you need to do a basic Proverbs challenge. Every day of the month, I'm going to read one chapter of Proverbs. And not just read one chapter of Proverbs, but the lessons that I can learn from each chapter that I read every day, I'm going to write it down and see what I can apply to my life. Sometimes, there's things that we have to grow in by ourselves. And sometimes, as spiritual leaders, we have to spell out some things for you. That's what I'm doing today. I could easily preach and go on and talk about stuff, but I feel, especially as the last months of the year are upon us, that we have to go deeper and be intentional about it. And how we can be intentional is by analyzing and looking at the things that, and take an assessment of our lives and say, you know what, this, I'm looking at this today. Second Timothy, for God has not given us, Second Timothy 4, for God has, has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and Discipline. 
Wrong answer. Thank you. Self, self-control. That word, sophronismus, is self-control of discipline. I said it last week. Many of the issues that we're facing in life are not necessarily deep spiritual issues. They're discipline issues. They're self-control issues where God expects us to apply a level of discipline. What we're seeing is a result of our disobedience or our dysfunction. And what can change that in many cases is when we apply discipline to our lives. When we, when we can hold ourselves accountable and say, that's not what God asked me to do. And because I didn't do that, I am now reaping the consequences. And it's not, I'm not talking about deep spiritual consequences. I'm talking about where, where in a day, where in the morning, if you had prayed and committed your day to the Lord, maybe the day would have been full of joy, even in hard circumstances. But because you didn't even commit or submit your day to the Lord, you're angry, you're frustrated, you're irritated at everybody because you didn't allow God to center or you didn't allow your mind to center its focus on God in that day. Instead of giving God your day, you gave your, your wisdom, your intellect the day and thought it could solve it. But lo and behold, it's the end of the day. You're still upset. You're still irritated. You're still frustrated because you didn't give God your day. To give God your day is a discipline. When you wake up, first thing you say, Lord, I give you my day. This day belongs to you. How can I serve your will and your purposes? Before you pick your phone, before you open an app, This is part of the discipline that I'm talking about. The enemy would want you to be distracted by the things of the day. Instead of setting your mind on things that are above, as the Bible says, the first thing that your mind is set upon is the first post that you see. And the first post that you see or the first tweet that you see or the first TikTok that you see sets pace for your day. Some of you are wondering why you're so frustrated and irritable. The first thing you saw was damp- news that would dampen your spirit. And you're wondering why your day is going that way. It's because the essence of your life, you've, you've not allowed him to give you an impartation of his essence. Now you've taken the essence of somebody else. Someone that has so much crinkum crankum going on in their lives. You've now breathed in their essence and now you're manifesting that in your day. So what am I trying to say? Going back to the original point, the three areas. What's distracting you in prayer? What's distracting you in the word? What's distracting you from doing the will of God? In fact, let me touch on that third point. What's distracting you from the will of God? There are things that God has asked you to do in general. There are things that God has asked you to do this year. And so as we're going into the final few months of the year, maybe, the reality is maybe you may not be able to complete it. There's no condemnation in that. But when you know the truth and you know better you <laughs> and you, you're aware of it, you've got to do something. Which means that the last few months of the year, whatever the Lord asks you to start doing, you've got to, to get going. Whether you complete it by December the 30th or not, you've got to start. There's people who started this year going, oh yeah, we, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to, to, to go to the gym. They did one, two weeks. Let's say a month. You saw small changes. And you thought, ah, I can rest on my laurels now. You see small muscles. And you think that you've won. But you haven't apprehended the goal. And it goes back to a point that Sister Carissa was making in that sometimes we start things and we're not able to complete it. You know, for some people, why they start and don't, they don't complete? Because they see, they get a glimpse of success in a sense. And they think that's good enough. So if I go back to the weight loss one, for example, you've lost a little bit of weight. Wow, I've lost weight. So why have you gone back to eating half a pack of biscuit again? Oh, but I still go to the gym. That's not the point. The point is there was a discipline that allowed you to achieve those results. And there's a goal. You haven't achieved the goal. You've achieved something that allows you to get towards your goal. That's why I said you've caught a sniff of success. And that's where we drop the ball. 
It's just like what I was talking about before in terms of exercising these gifts and characteristics God has given us. Oh, I'm exercising patience. That's not the end of the story. There's people that are going to challenge your patience even more. So we thank God for the patience that you've been exercising. But the journey doesn't stop there. So what am I saying? Going back to the point of what's distracting you from the will of God. Be honest about what is distracting you. Sometimes, one of, if anything, one of, one of the things that's at the top of the list is just disobedience. It's disobedience that's distracting you. The next one might be excuses. It's funny because, Mickey, you didn't share about your, your Instagram challenge. 30 days. How many days do you have left? Two. I don't know if it was me. I don't know if it was the Lord that challenged you to do it. But I know that I said it to you at one point. So I said, he was talking about something. And I messaged him. I said, maybe it's time to do a challenge. I didn't tell him what the challenge needed to be. But I said, maybe it's time you need to do a challenge. And you, can, you will be able to testify and you'll be able to share to people what the challenge actually conditions you to do. When, you put a, when a challenge is set in front of you, you realize that your life has to be put in order in order for you to fulfill the challenge. This is how God builds strong men and women. He puts something in front of you and then he conditions you towards it. If I need to achieve X by this day, this is what I need to do in order to achieve it. Hello. So God likes working backwards. He sets the goal. Now let's begin. You now have to recognize, oh, I need to do this. If I'm going to do this particular thing, I'm going to have to wake up at this time. I'm going to have to do this thing. I'm going to have to speak to this person. I'm going to have to research X, Y, and Z in order for me to achieve what I need to by the set date. And if I follow this, even with challenges in place, the main thing is I'll be further. I'll be much closer to it than I was yesterday. I'll be much closer to it than I was when I wasn't doing anything at all. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So this month of October, this is we're starting. It's not just going to be it, the month of October that we're going into. We're going to start something that's going to build the grace of accountability. Somebody say accountability. So based on the things that you meditate on, and I'm going to give you till Wednesday. I'm going to give you till Wednesday Bible study to think and meditate on it. I don't want you to rush it, but I want you to really think about it. By Wednesday, what day is Wednesday? The second? The second, okay. So by Wednesday, I want you to have a list of things that you are going to commit to. The first part that I've asked you to do, that's just an assessment. You've just analyzed what... What is there? What are the distractions? What are the issues? Then you are going to put a plan in place. Hello. This is homework. This, this, this one, we will see who the serious saints are. Then you're, going to, then you're going to put in place a challenge that you're going to commit to. That this is what I'm going to do. We're starting in October, and guess what? Like I said, it's not a 30-day challenge. This is what you're going to do from now to the end of the year. Oh. Yes, oh. <laughs> from the 2nd of October to December 31st, these are disciplines you are going to commit to. Because I've realized it is very easy, especially in times like, let's say, for example, when we do a fast and when we do a fast at City Worship, it's always it's solid, right? We learn, we, it's solid, no? Yes, no? We learn, we grow, we develop. People are like, yes, I've grown in this, I've grown in that, great and amazing. What happens after the fast is done? The fire dies down. We return back to chopping half a pack of biscuit. We return back to binging. On Netflix, we return back to our old ways. We return back to the things that once ensnared us in the first place. So what we are doing is we're building a platform for sustainable discipline. Somebody say sustainable disciplines. 
This is not, oh, I'm trying to, uh, this, this, I'm not talking about, you know, wild goals that we put in place that we might start and we won't finish. I'm talking about goals that are put in place. I'm, this is nothing, hello, and I want to make clear, this has nothing to do with your career, your ambition, amen. It's got nothing to do with that. Hello. Yeah, sorry to burst your bubble. It's got nothing to do with your job. This has got to do with your spiritual, yeah, your spiritual capacity and things that God has asked you to do. If you want to do one for your career, God bless you. You can do that at the side. As you do it at the side, God will bless you and give you strength. This is not for your career. This is about what God has asked you to do. Right? Not that I don't care about your career, but that can be a very much a distraction. And a lot of the time, that's even one of the distractions that people find themselves ensnared by when it comes to the will of God, your career. Why can't you do it? Oh, you know, work is just work. We all work. We all work. But we all have a responsibility to the one who empowers us to even go to work. Amen? Ah, yes. So what I'm trying to say is that I want us to build sustainable disciplines. Rain, sun, shine, whatever it is, we're going to continue. For me, I think some of you know anyway, I think I spoke about it last week. I'm doing a half marathon in a couple weeks. I'm even doing it with this champion over here, Mr. Delali. We're doing it in a few weeks. And as you know, especially me starting this running journey since May last year, I've learned, I have learned, I am continuing to learn that where God is calling me and what ought to be achieved cannot be discipled by my emotions. If it's my emotions, more time, I will not want to even leave my house in the first place. People say, so how do you do it? I say, I get my key, I open the door, and I lock the door, and I put it through the letterbox. There's no way of me getting back into the house unless PT comes down from the office. So I have no way of going back unless I do that run. So guess what? I'm on my Zoom. I will get out. I'll be running. This week, we've had crazy rain, no? Yeah? I've run five days this week. Rain is not the excuse. And this is not to say, oh, look at me. This is to say that what we say as our spiritual goals and where we want to be in the Lord can only be achieved when we say no to the things that want to easily ensnare us. That couch of yours will easily ensnare you. Your phone, your iPad, your laptop is a, is a snare. But if you don't put your body under control, you don't put your body under subjection, these things will rule over you. And we find more time that they do. So we want to move away from that and into the will of God. Amen? So by Wednesday, the 2nd of October, I want everyone to come up with a sustainable plan, something that you're going to stick to. And what we're going to do is we're going to do maybe accountability groups. And maybe what we'll do is already use maybe our homework groups from Bible study. If you're not in one of them, don't worry, we'll sort out one for you. But your Bible study groups that you're in, that will be your accountability group. And you know what that's going to cause you to do? When someone is lagging behind, you will not wait for Tuesday prayer or Wednesday Bible study. You'll say, Shia, Friday, I know you want, you're, you're meant to be going out with your work colleagues. But before you do, 6.30, let's pray together. I'm giving you the, I'm giving you the, I'm giving you the gems. Some, Shalom might say, guys, you know what? I've been doing well this week, but today has been a bad day. I, I want to see, I want to see, or God wants to see, how you guys are going to step up to the plate. If someone's going through a hard day and you guys are like, oh, yeah, man. Sorry, man. God will give you strength. Or you'll pick up your phone and say, Shia, you've been doing it for the last six weeks. You can do it. In fact, not just Shia, you can do it. It's you must do it. We'll do it together. Oh, I was meant to, you know, I was meant to do my 20K walk today, but I can't do it. That's, that's fine. On Saturday, me and you, Hyde Park, we're walking around the walls of Jericho until we complete this 20K. This is what it means. Hey, bro, hey, sis, I'm feeling low today. Mentally, it's been a challenge. That's fine. Have you got 10 minutes? I'm going to give you a call. Hey, bro, hey, sis, I've been, you know, I've just been struggling in this area of content creation, X, Y, and Z, and I'm just X, Y, and Z. Don't worry. If you've got 30 minutes at 8 o'clock, let's have a call. Let's go through X, Y, and Z. 
This is what the accountability groups are going to foster. And we will learn to grow up by force. Hello. We will grow up. Say we will grow up by force. This is how God is going to grow us and mature us. Yes, we've been growing and it's great and amazing. But there's a level of accountability amongst us as a community that God wants to harness so that God is going to, is going really and truly, I don't know the best way to say it, but this is the best way I know how. God is going to breed mentality monsters in this place. That when it comes to mental like f- capacity and spiritual capacity, because of what we have gone through and what we've journeyed in, everyone will be, will, when no one is getting left behind. If you are thriving in the will of God, I can't be slacking what God has called me to do. Even if God has called us to do different things, that's fine. But we're going to build each other up. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. So this week, we're going to kick it off. Like I said, choose, um, Wednesday is when it should all be done by. And then from Wednesday onward, in your accountability groups, you guys, it's up to you. I'm not going to tell you what to do, per se, but you guys are going to hold each other accountable. I don't want any of this, oh, you know, just patting on the back. If someone says, if someone says that they're overtaken in something, I don't want, oh, you know, just, just try it. Or someone puts something, let's say you have a WhatsApp group or whatever, you have a group chat. Someone says something and everyone just airs it or just leaves it. Or someone will be posting funny TikTok videos. In fact, let me just give you the heads up. It's got, I don't want any, in in fact, I'm letting you know for free. Yeah? It's an accountability group. Unless it's got to do with something edifying, I don't want any jokes, any any TikTok videos about joking about, I'm letting you know for free. And this is on the internet as well. So this is even for public accountability. If you want to do joking, you do that in your private message. Don't use whatever group chat or platform that you guys are using to communicate together for any... I don't want any of that. Do you guys hear me? I don't want... Hello? Do you hear? I don't want any of that. If you want to send it to yourselves on TikTok, not in that group. This is, this is a group for growth. Amen? Yeah? Yeah? This is a group for growth. As I'm serious, as serious as I'm telling you and I'm communicating it to you, I want you guys to be serious with one another. Your destiny is at hand. Your destiny is at hand. We can't play. If someone is saying that they need support, rally around them the best way you can. We are in this together. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're in this together. And I seriously want us to adopt that mentality. We are in it together. How can I support you? How can I serve you? How can I pray for you today? Is there any way that I can, is there something that I have that I can give to you, that I can support you with? That's the mentality that I want. And I don't know, but I I feel like maybe maybe I'll probably join one of the groups as well for for myself. But we are, this year, we are going to finish the year strong and we're going to start a new year even stronger. Amen? And that's, that's the aim for me. So as I'm wrapping up, we're going to pray. We're going to pray some, we're going to pray a few prayers just to ask Holy Spirit to give us insight, understanding, wisdom as to how we analyze the points that I've given, but also how to plan and prepare. This is not, our, 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 our success in the will of God is not going to happen by chance. It's going to be by intentionality. It's going to be by intentionality. Somebody say intentionality. We've got to, we, 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 there's no way we're not going to be an intentional people. As committed as you are to your careers and the things that, that benefit you right now, you've got to be more committed to the things of your soul. The destiny of your soul matters more than anything else. What profits a man, Jesus said, if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? I don't want us to be a house that we're not not growing in the things of God. We're we're doing a fast and it, it happens to be a great fast but then everyone kind of goes back to the way things were. I don't want us to be that kind of house. Other places can be that, other churches can do that but we are going to be a house that grows from glory to glory. Does that make sense? So I didn't even go into what I wanted to talk about today, as in finish off from last week. But I think that over the last few days, especially from Friday, 
these are things that I've been really been meditating on. And I was thinking, Lord, how, what's the wisdom that we can use to sustain us so that we can grow? We don't want immobility in this house. God wants us to grow. Yes, we may face challenges in our spiritual walk. That, that will happen. But just as David did, 1 Samuel 30, the Bible says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. If I'm not here, Tuchy, if Prophet's not here, if PT's not here, can you pray for yourself? Can you pray for somebody else? That's, that's what you've got to ask yourself. If we are not here, can we do it for ourselves? Let's say there was a Sunday that none of us could come. Who would be confident enough to say, it's me that will pick up the mic today? Elder Timmy isn't here. Elder Ros isn't here. Minister Adana isn't here. It's only one elder that's here. That's Minister Sam. Would Minister Sam be able to say, guys, you know what? It's me that will do the word today. And you know what? Even if he asked himself that, he wouldn't have even had a choice. Because I would have probably messaged him to go, yeah, it's you that's giving the word today. He said, ah, I didn't pray today. That's your business. <laughs> you, that's when you will learn how to rely on the Holy Spirit. Ah, Lord, I didn't have a word for today. When the Bible says be ready in season and out of season, this is what it looks like. I've said to you, there's times at CW, I've been ill. And there's no one else to come and preach. Say, Lord, <laughs> I don't know what to preach today. You, you, you will give me the wisdom to know what to say. And he will give it. This is how we're going to grow. I know for the next couple months, I'm just letting you, you know for free, I'm going to be throwing curveballs as well. I've already said it, October, after this Wednesday, I'm not leading a Bible study this month. Those of you that received your, your blessing for not doing your, um, your homework on time in, what was it, last month, you guys are the ones that's going to be leading the next few weeks. I'll just give you a title. You will buy yourselves. You will come up with how to do the Bible study. Once again, this is how you learn how to grow. And if you don't prepare yourself, when Wednesday comes, and I've been looking at you, it's not you that, I know Shia's, Shia is, Shia does what she's meant to do. But I've just been looking at her a lot today. Don't worry, there's nothing, there's nothing, it's nothing personal. But if you're, you're waffling in the Bible study, I will know. And I'll just be looking and I'll be nodding my head. After, when I send you a text to say, can we speak tomorrow? Then you will know. I just, I'm just letting you know in advance that it's the fear of the Lord that should shock you. Because when we had that conversation, I'll say, yeah, you said this. Can you show me in the Bible where it says this? How long did you prepare? You say, oh, we prepared for a week. I'll go and ask the person that's in your team. How long did you prepare for this? Oh, AP, you know, we only had 30 minutes yesterday. Oh, that's interesting. So I said that you spent two hours last week. Ah, that's fine. What would then happen is you just compile your, the next month in November. November is my sabbatical month. So what's going to happen is that some of you will even be preaching that month as well on Sunday. Not every Sunday. One Sunday, I'll just say so and so. You two, you three will do the joint sermon. You'll just be handing the mic to each other. On, on the <laughs> I don't have anything to say. You will say something that day. But the point I'm making is that I don't want us to ever get to a point where we're comfortable, where we're just sitting down and we feel like the best that we have to do is, oh, I'm in the media team, oh, I'm in this team. No, no, no. There's going to be some curveballs. But this is for our growth. This is for our development. Amen?